All of the methods that we've talked about so far have been runge kutta methods. They've been methods to, follow, uh, to solve the ordinary differential equation uh, given by dy dx equals uh, some function of x and y of both the independent and dependent variables. And the runge kutta methods again say y i plus 1 is equal to some phi times h. Uh, well, excuse me, y i plus some phi times h. So uh, you just, you, you have where you're at and then you move along some slope. So that's great, except um, we have a, a sort of a problem here it is we need to figure out what the step size is. If we're going to, if we're going to solve uh, this system uh, for all of the methods that we've talked about so far, you have to pick the step size. You have to set this is the step size that I want you to use throughout the whole entire process. And um, this is the same thing applied when we did the integration that we did previously. And, and you may recall that discussion when we did the Newton-Coates formulas and then we, after the Newton-Coates integration formulas, then we later introduced Richardson extrapolation and we also introduced this uh, adaptive quadrature algorithm. Now, uh, analogous to adaptive quadrature, um, there's also adaptive runge kutta formulas for solving ordinary, ordinary differential equations or systems of ordinary differential equations. So that's the adaptive runge kutta algorithms. That's what they're all about. And uh, the book sort of talks about this problem uh, where uh, you have a function and maybe it, it changes, it changes, it's going along and then it changes rapidly and then it goes along again and 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 you may be misled a little bit by the discussion to say, oh well, then that's what it's it's rapid changes and then slow changes. That's what runge kutta, uh, adaptive runge kutta is all about. And that's not exactly true. What adaptive runge kutta is all about is if you really don't know the step size, it will intelligently figure out the step size, and it will it will uh, adapt it a little bit um, and and do a little bit tighter step size in the regions of, of rapid change, and less step size. Uh, uh, a uh, slower step size in in the regions of, of less rapid change. So it is a little bit smart that way, but we'll see later that there, when we have really big changes in in the speed of uh, the solution of a system where we have rapid changes and the not so rapid changes, their uh, runge kutta methods actually don't don't work very well at all, or at least these runge kutta methods that we've introduced, which are called explicit uh, runge kutta methods. And so they're called explicit runs, runge kutta methods, explicit uh, runge kutta methods because you can solve them directly. Uh, in other words, this yi plus 1 is yi plus vh, and yi plus 1 only appears in the left-hand side of the equations. On the other hand, an implicit uh, equation would have yi plus 1 would, would also appear somewhere on this side of the equation. Now, um, the adaptive runge kutta methods uh, the, the most well-known adaptive runge kutta method uh, is actually called uh, runge kutta uh, Felberg. And the runge kutta Felberg method uh, uses an adaptive step size. And uh, what it does is sort of the same thing that we did uh, when we're and, and we are doing integration after all so let me just show uh, we had our system here and when we were doing integration we had uh, we had our step size and it was it was uh, we had a, step, a set step size and then we went and said well okay now we're gonna do sample at twice the interval right and now we're going to integrate that again. So this, let's say this was our limit A and this was our limit B. Uh, now that we've doubled the step size or, or halved, um, halved the step size, have the interval H here. Now the interval H is half of what it was. Now we should be able to get a better estimate. So we can do that with numerical integration. We can also do that with uh, the runge kutta methods, which, which really are just uh, numerical integration methods as we've talked about. So and runge kutta felberg algorithms in general are algorithms uh, that uh, 
come up with an error estimate. So that the key to being able to adapt uh, the step size is being able to estimate error. If you can't estimate the error, you can't adapt the step size. Okay, if the step size or if the error is high, then you make the the step size smaller, and if the error is low, you can make the step size larger. But if you can't estimate the error, there is no way that you can adapt the step size. So, uh, again, we use uh, successively smaller step sizes. We we use two different step sizes um, uh, to estimate the error. That's one way. So there's two methods of estimating the error. One is uh, change the step size. And the second method is um, you, you use a larger step size and then use a smaller step size. The second eth method is um, uh, fit or use, I'll just put it use, uh, use higher and lower order methods. In other words, combine higher and lower order methods. In other words, let's say we, sit, we fit a fourth order runge cut a method uh, over um, and we integrate with a fourth order runge cut a method and then we do the integration for that for that segment again with a fifth order runge cut a method. And so with that, then, then we're changing uh, the, the order of the method that we're using um, over that interval. And that is um, the general runge cut a uh, Fel Felberg approach. Now, the thing is, when we change this step size or use a higher order and a lower order method, uh, our steps, remember when we, when we have the step size, the reason we did that was because we already had the function evaluated here and here and here and here. All we had to do when we did our integration was go back and evaluate it at a few other points on the interval. And uh, so the, the, the points on the interval at which we have to evaluate the function are, are determined uh, by the coefficients in the, the, the coefficients k by the k coefficients in, in, in the a coefficients in the runge cut method uh, that determine where you're going to evaluate the function. The runge cut felberg um, the cash carp algorithm, um, cash carp algorithm for um, runge cut felberg is a, a fourth and fifth, it's, it's a mixture, it's a fourth uh, and fifth order version. So it, it combines the fourth and fifth order runge cut a, um, runge cut a methods. But that's not the good thing about it. The good thing about it is, is it does, uh, it does so with, with a, uh, much more efficiently than just this having. Uh, if you were, so for example, if you were going to do a fifth, a fourth and fifth order runge cut a method, um, then you would have to have, uh, in general, ten function evaluations to do that. Well, the cash carp runge cut, runge cut a Felberg uh, method uh, does a fourth and fifth order, um, does a fourth and fifth order approximation, but it does it with only six function evaluations, and so and it's estimating the error in the process. And so that's typically the method of choice, sort of the go-to method for solving an ordinary differential equation. The first one that you'll pick up is uh, is typically um, a, a, an adaptive runge cut a fourth and fifth order runge cut a um, runge cut a algorithm, such as uh, the one uh, used by Cash and Carp.